It was a longer podcast yesterday, to a, so a shorter one today. Hello, I'm Peter Stewart. Thanks very much indeed for the loan of your ears. You can find me on Twitter, where I'm Tweeter Stewart, T-W-W-E-T-E-R-S-T-E-W-A-R-T. So we're speaking about a little bit about projection at the back end of yesterday's uh, podcast. Um, so let's just pick up on that just for a couple of moments. We naturally speak at the volume that's required for the proximity of those who are listening. Because for most of our history, that's all we needed to do. For most of our history, that's all we could do. Yeah? We only addressed a few people at a time. They were usually close to us, physically and emotionally. There was no way of amplification. It's not that long ago that, you know, we didn't have mass communication. We just spoke to people in the room that were there. If they weren't in the same room as us, they couldn't hear us. We, we, we had no need to project too much in the way that we do now. OK, we would project to the back of a, of a hall, you know, on the hustings for an election or something like that. We would project and shout at a football match. Obviously, obviously. But now we use a different kind of voice. And it's confused us because it's only in our recent evolution that we are talking to thousands or millions of people at the same time, but we can't see any of them. And that kind of confuses our evolutionary brain. With radio and TV, we're speaking to people we can't see, and yet... They are sometimes many hundreds of miles away. To our prehistoric brain, this doesn't make sense. What volume do we need to speak at? What kind of projection do we need so it sounds authentic and natural and engaging and conversational? We'll come to that later on in the podcast series. And I must remember to write about that in the book as well. The book and the podcast share the same name, Get a better broadcast, podcast and video voice from me, Peter Stewart. From London, back tomorrow with more.